everybody. Welcome to On Air Brands. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a podcaster and get on other shows? And then when you are on other shows, what do you say and what do you do? And how do you make sure that what you're doing on that show is best going to support your brand, your business, and your goals? That's what we're going to talk about today, right here, right now. It's On Air Brands. <laughs> What's up, Eric? It's me. It and is. Not um, Todd, no and Todd. I'm bogey. I don't know, I know where that's what people thought from. when they started the show. And like when <laughs> the On Air Brands thing came on, and I was like, man, I expected it to be longer than that. So I'm just sitting here, and I'm like, oh, wait, that says live. That means talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I love about live. It's like it just brings this energy, and I don't know. It's just fun. It's so it. true. And you know what? That ties in so much to what we're going to talk about today because the imperfectness that goes on with live shows in a way allows people to relate more to you and to your mission and to your brand, which is what we're all looking for when we go on podcasts and when yeah. we're all connecting. Like I know so many people focus on editing, which is important in its own right. But editing out all of those imperfections can yeah. sometimes hurt you more than help you, you think? So true. I was just talking about this last night. Someone asked me, um, you know, do you think that what you're doing has really elevated your game, like public speaking? I'm like, it, it's, it, there's no words to describe how much this helps you overall on just your speaking ability your ability to convey messages, you know, clearly and efficiently. It's, it's pretty wild because what you're doing is you're going to the gym, right? But it's yeah. your mouth, it's your tongue, it's your muscles, it's your thoughts. And I actually told him that, uh, it's, it's actually something where if you get too good at it, you're unrelatable. Mm -hmm. And I'm very conscious of that. Like, I don't want to be, I don't ever want to be too polished, Amber, where yeah. now people are like something a little off about this guy. You know, you get, you, you need to mess up to your point and you need to stay real. Yeah. And then, you know, this is completely off topic, but kind of on topic. So I'm going to say it anyways. Um, this is also when we're looking at getting in front of people and getting on stages and we have that, you know, little voice in our head that says, but this person always does it better. And this person knows more and this person has more experience. That person isn't relatable to the person who's just starting for exactly what we just talked about. And they need that middle person, which is many times us that's, in between that super polished and experienced person and the person that's just starting. And so I see so many people, I was at an event thrive in Vegas three years ago. And I remember hearing we need multiple messengers for the same message for that reason. And it always stuck with me. Mm, yeah. I, I, I love the, this topic and I love how people are. So we know the saying that, the number one feared thing is public speaking. Mm -hmm. right? Number one and number two is death. And yeah. I love Seinfeld's bit that that means the person giving the eulogy would rather be the one in the casket than, <laughs> uh, because he's, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's worried about public speaking and what yeah. people think. And that's the thing is, how do you exercise? And we don't need to go down rabbit holes on this one, but this is this is a really a challenge for most is how do you exercise getting all those thoughts out of your head when you're talking? Yeah. Like, like, what does my nose look like? How is my hair? Do people judge? Are they judging my shoes? Are they judging my whatever it is? When you start that cycle in your mind, then you're going off track of your topics and your message and everything you're trying to do. And you're overly concerned with like me with my hand movements and doing all this stuff. Yeah. You know, I will short story really quickly before we dig into a little bit more of the little tidbits of what to do as a guest. I will never forget the moment that that switched for me. And mm -hmm. it was 
extremely emotional. I had been doing um, my NLP work. I had been going through all of my training certifications. And I remember at the end of every one of our certification classes, we would get the opportunity to stand up and talk about what that class experience was for us and what some of our biggest breakthroughs were. And I remember this would have been November of two years ago. And I remember sitting up there talking and all of a sudden I started crying and my coach said, what's wrong? And I said, it's quiet. Mm. And she says in the room. And I said, no, in my head. Wow. It was like all of those voices that say these people don't want to talk to me that I shouldn't be up here. You know, exactly what you just said. Are they worried about what I'm wearing? Am I wearing the right thing? Am I standing the right way? They were quiet. It was gone. And so to answer your question, I think that it's doing the work. Yeah. You know, so, you know, moving this kind of into what we're going to talk about today, you have a podcast, you have a business, and now you want to be able to get that out and you're going to go on other shows. How do you find the right shows? How do you show up right on those shows? How do you make sure your message is all put together? I think these are all really amazing things that podcast hosts don't always think about because we don't allow ourselves to switch. And I think that when we do allow ourselves to switch, then we make ourselves a better host and a better guest at the same time. Yeah. There's nothing more powerful than that, Amber. I'm so glad you 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 chose this topic today because People don't talk about it enough. They don't exercise it enough. They don't implement this strategy enough. If you have a podcast and oftentimes, you know, people ask us every day, like, what's the ROI or how do I grow my show? How do I get it so that it pays for itself? Well, there's a lot of strategies, but one of the number one strategies that people don't implement is guesting on other shows and talking about not just yourself, but eventually your podcast. How, what's the best way that people can reach you? And then you could talk about more than corporate and say, and, and you, what better vehicle to use to promote your show than another podcast? Because now people have their headphones on. They're already listening. They're already podcast fans. Now they just go to another show, always looking for new shows. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. So let's start with the, the beginning. How do people pick shows? Like if you're a podcast host, what do you think is the most important consideration that someone needs to think about when they're deciding whether or not to guest on a show or deciding whether or not to reach out to somebody to ask to be a guest on their show? So one of the amazing things that's happened over the past couple of years is everyone in our space probably more likely has a show now. So a lot of the people that you're interviewing most likely has an opportunity for you to be on their show. Now, we used to call that show swapping, right? And it always sort of felt disingenuous to just say, hey, Amber, can you be on my show? And then we'll just swap. Well, I mean, that's fine. But those are the first people that you can actually reach out to say, hey, I had you on my show back in the day. Um, would you mind? I'm, I'm, I'm doing a little podcast tour. That's a great way because now you're building your network, you're reengaging, and and you're having the conversation and now they're paying you back. Right. Yeah. So it's really cool. I, I mean, that's the first thing, right? Amber, I mean, I think that's pretty obvious is leverage your network and start asking people that you already know. Yeah. And, and before we move on, I want to highlight the podcast tour for a minute because the first time I saw somebody do this, I was like, man, this is brilliant because you advertise that you're going to be doing a podcast tour. You get your information out that way. People now know who you are because you're asking for introductions to mm -hmm. people who have podcasts. So you're, you're getting your information out that way. And then in this period of span of whatever period you choose, you're going on a mass amount of podcasts that are going to be released at different interviews intervals throughout the next multiple months. And you just get this massive networking and promotional information just from this short amount of work. Like you can do all the episodes in two weeks. You can block out your schedule for two weeks, mass record, and then you have marketing material for months. Yeah. And more likely than not, you're going to get all this marketing material for free, basically, because the podcasters will promote your podcast episode and appearance. And that's a lot of social media content being created for you with, with like Amber said, very little work. Now, I want to add also where you really throw gasoline on the fire is when you hire someone. 
to help mm-hmm. you get on shows. So podcast booking agencies, we have we have a couple of people on our team that do this, uh, whether it's in the real estate investing space or or just business and entrepreneurship in general. Uh, Todd's great, you know you know Todd, not not mm-hmm. our not Todd Genitazio, but uh, Todd Armstrong, and he works with us. He gets me on shows, amazing yeah. shows. And I wouldn't even classify them as guest appearances because what happens for me is this is expanding my network. Yeah. These are people literally, Amber, and you saw, and I'm sorry, we were a couple hours from you not long ago and in, uh, I know. in, in Utah. I was so disappointed. <laughs> and um, while we were there in Park City, Utah, there were two out of the four podcasters that we brought that I had just met through guesting on podcasting. Like I had known of them and they had known of me, but I had just guessed it. So it was fresh in my mind. We had a conversation and I was like, Hey, there's a wonderful opportunity for us to get together. And how cool is that is like, it's beyond podcasting, right? Because now you're forming a relationship, you're building trust and you're helping each other in ways that is beyond just reading a bio and then having a one-on-one conversation and asking each other questions. So yeah. it's powerful to guest because it yeah. breaks open the doors beyond your podcast. Absolutely. And once your schedule starts filling up and you start having to be a little bit more selective with your time, which is going to happen as your business grows and your podcast grows. I remember the first time that I saw this done and I've been meaning to implement it and I haven't yet. And every time I say it, I'm like, this is such a good idea. Um, I listened to one of my favorite podcasters in the music space and they did a smash cast is what they called it. And it was two podcast hosts and they did a recording and they went back and forth, almost like a dance of like who's leading and who's following and switching. And then they released the same audio on both of their podcast streams. And they were able to get two episodes mainly in the time of one. And it was unique and different and Mm. engaging. It was really cool. Wow. So they kind of jockeyed. Well, they basically had a conversation, but it was almost like, what show am I listening to? Rather than like going back to back, recording your episode and their episode. Yeah. And I think when you have somebody that is in a similar space as yours and your podcast is going to be similar, that that works really, really well. Mm. Um, And so that's a really cool idea as, as well. What do you think is, well, let me go back. I'm just going to say this. I think it's interesting that when asked what you should be thinking about when you start reaching out to podcast guests, that numbers didn't come out of your mouth. I feel like a lot of people think my podcast isn't big enough. I don't have enough listeners. I can't reach out to people and ask to be on a guest because my network isn't big enough yet. Mm. So what do you say to those people? Um, Because I think it's really telling that numbers wasn't anywhere on your mind. Yeah. So when, so let me, let me think about your question again. It's, 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 if I and people out there are looking to be a guest, but they feel the like, word what that do comes I bring up to the, the table? phrase that we use is like, yeah, imposter syndrome, right? Yeah. What, the thing is, if you have a show, you've started it based off a theme, off a topic, right? You you have value that you're providing in some way, whether it's entertainment or business, and you're sharing that with your audience through your podcast. Now, why wouldn't you have value to share on someone else's podcast because you started your own show based off some theme, some some topic, some thing that you're a subject matter expert in. So this is a good point, Amber. Before you guest on shows, you should absolutely have a bio ready, some type of a one sheet that promotes you, your brand, your mission, your values, your your voice. I highly recommend like on mine, and I don't notice on, on uh, this on others, is you don't need to put an entire dissertation in like two point fonts where it's all smashed together and there's eight paragraphs. No one's going to read that. No one's going to read that. Keep it simple. Keep it short and even make it easier for the podcaster to see what the highlights of your topics are. So there's a little box on the top of mine that says topics he loves to discuss. And then it's like four or five things that I love chatting about highlight it for them. And then that's all they need to know. And then also here's another cool thing, Amber, is when I'm, and and, and I want to hear from your perspective too, when you're vetting new guests is I get these all the time. Like, Eric, get this person on your show, get this person on your show. And then there's no links in the email. 
So it's just a long thing, dissertation about like who that person is and everything they've accomplished, just text. I'm like, I'm not reading that. But if there's links to their website, to their sizzle reel, to a video, video is key. If you, I know this is next level, but if you can create some form of a sizzle reel, you know who does it really well? Mike Ham, right? Yeah. My friend, Mike Ham. He smashes together, talking about smashing. He creates a smashed up mashup of sizzle reel of him hosting his own show. So that's yeah. relatively easy to do um, or hire a VA or someone on your team to do it. But people want to see video. I want to hear how you speak, how you show up, what's your energy level. Like if, if you just have words to describe who you are, I'm most likely just archiving that email. Yeah. So I really hope that there are some podcast promotion services that are listening to this show, because what I'm about to say is, in <laughs> yeah, my opinion, the most important thing, and it's going to ruffle some feathers. <laughs> if I get a random email saying, get this person on my show, it gets immediately sent to my trash. Um, my um, VA will reply with a Google form that I've created that asks them to fill it out. And that's my gatekeeper. If they don't fill out the Google form with exactly what you're asking for, mm -hmm. then they don't get considered. Now there is exceptions to that. And this is where I really hope podcast promotion individuals are listening to the show. I have two people that have the golden ticket to my podcast. My um, executive assistant is told if we get a message immediately book their guests on the show. Mm. Todd Armstrong is one of them. Yeah. Um, and the reason for that is because they took the time to get me on the phone to mm -hmm. find out who my ideal guest was, yes. to have a conversation mm -hmm. with me and build a relationship with me as a person, as a business owner, and as a podcast host. So I am confident in knowing that they are not going to waste my time or their guest time because they actually know my podcast. Um, if you are sending blind emails out on the if I send 100 emails out, I might get 10 responses back and then I've done my job. You are doing yourself, your guests, and the podcast host a disservice. Yeah. I liken it to, and, and like you said, this is a call to all podcast booking agents. I liken it to, this is a terrible thing that people are doing now. They're completely abusing the LinkedIn DMs. Mm. Like I am constantly bombarded. I can't even find real conversations anymore uh, on LinkedIn because I'm getting hundreds a day of just spam. Mm -hmm. And people that have no idea how to communicate. Like you don't lead a conversation by going me, 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 I, 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 I. Like ask a question, like you said, get to know me. That takes time. So they don't do it, right? It's all about the numbers. So the same thing is happening with podcast booking agents. They're just plastering um, everyone's email with, can you book my guest? Yeah. Book the show. And you have no information or no knowledge on who I need to talk to. Um, and like you said, I was being nice. Like I said, yeah. I'll archive it. No, yeah, I'm most likely throwing it in the trash. <laughs> Sometimes when they catch me on a really feisty day, I respond. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So sometimes <laughs> sometimes I'll respond and say, thank you so much for your message. I'm curious, what episode of my show did you listen to that made you believe that your guest would be a good um, value add for my show? Yeah. And sometimes I will get back nothing. Mm. And other times I will get back, well, so my show is all about defining your idea of success. And I'll get back something like, oh, my guest believes success is important. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. I'm sure they do. So um, <laughs> so if you're if you're reaching out, I mean, if you are a podcast host, you have a leg up because you understand, at mm. least to some degree, the struggles that a podcast host goes through in getting cold pitches. And I don't care whether you've had your podcast for a week or for three years, you're getting bombarded with podcast requests. Um, so listen to a couple episodes. Have a real conversation with the host about what you liked yeah. and what you didn't leave them a review on Google or mm -hmm. on iTunes. If it's a, if it's a podcast you really want to be on, if it's somebody that you think is really going to level up your business, give them value before you ever ask to be on their show, I think is one of the most important things. Yeah. hundred percent. So now we're on the show. We have hit record. 
how, and this is a loaded question, so we'll get what we can in this. How does a podcast host switch to a podcast guest and allow somebody else to run the show? <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm experiencing now amber this is great like uh i'm like man this is nice i'm, I'm in the passenger seat although uh you know we we, we play well because we've known each other for a long time so it's kind of like kind of go back and forth and co-host but this is your show this is todd's show so it's fu it's fun to be a part of it um it's interesting because when you flip the script it's so second nature if, especially if you've recorded you know like 50, 100 plus episodes, you ask the questions, you drive mm -hmm. the conversation. Now, also what's interesting is you should have, if you're doing it right, developed um, a muscle and a way to understand that you need to pause for the other person to talk. I have been guilty of this. If I listen to old guest appearances, I've rambled on and I'll time myself now. I'll go back to those episodes. I'm like, man, I, I talked for four minutes, five minutes straight. And I've experienced that with other uh, guests where I'm like, you need to pause right? Yeah. and allow the other person, let it breathe. Sometimes I can't, I think it's nerves too, you know, yeah. so calm down, get, you know, like relax. I think, I think also it's really interesting and important to understand the, um, the makeup of the show that you're going mm. on. My show is extremely conversational. So I love it when guests, when I had a guest recently where I asked them a question and they were like, well, I want to know your answer first. Whoa. And so like they would ask questions in response and then we would compare like answers. And it was so cool. Yeah. Um, if you're on a conversational podcast, then it might be okay for you to sprinkle in some of those types of questions or, you know, push back a little bit. Um, if you're on a podcast that is known for asking the same 13 questions in the same order and getting through those, that isn't as conversational. Mm -hmm. And first of all, you chose to go on that podcast. So respect the format. Mm -hmm. And second of all, there's probably a reason they're doing it. And it could be for your benefit as well in promotional material, in being able to get sound bites. There's so many different ways. But I think as podcast hosts, sometimes it's so easy for us to take over a show we're guesting on instead of sit back and just allow ourselves to have a conversation, which doesn't give us the result we want in promoting our business and making people like us. Yeah, a hundred percent. And that level of self-awareness is critical. I, I mean, it's just a wonderful human trait to have, like always working towards self-awareness so that yeah. you can, you right, you know, in the moment or, you know, very shortly after like, man, I screwed that up or I could have improved this or man, I did that well. Have you ever, it's uncomfortable to do. Have you ever reached out to a podcast host afterwards and asked them if no. they would give feedback on your guesting oh, appearance so and whether there was anything so you good. could have done better? That is such a good exercise. I have not done that it's to my so recent recollection. So you've done it. Um, I've done it in writing um, and yeah. it was not effective. And and the reason I think it wasn't effective is because nobody wants to say the things that need to be said, mm. right? So I think what I'm going to do next time, and it makes my stomach turn just talking about it, <laughs> um, is get them on a, a follow-up Zoom call. Yeah. Ooh. And and preface this. I don't remember what book I was reading. It might have been Miracle Morning. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, um, but they did an exercise where they sent a letter to like 10 people that they valued asking them for direct yeah. feedback on how they show up. Yeah. And they prefaced it by saying, I really need you to be honest. Mm -hmm. This doesn't help me if you're not honest. So I'm not going to be upset with what you say. Yep. I'm not going to lash out. I need an honest feedback. So then you let them say what they're going to say. And then we get to filter that through by saying, okay, this is from their eyes. Is this something I really want to change? Am I bothered by something that they said? Do I think this is a problem that I want to change? And if not, then embrace it and know that that's something that makes you who you are and, it, and it's not for everybody. Yeah. I love that. That, that is, that is an exercise in self-awareness. Definitely. Um, I've, I've, I've gone through that exercise to find out what my superpower was, mm -hmm. you know, many years ago. And if, you know, you reach out to 12 and eight of them say a certain thing, they all say the same thing. And you're like, oh, wow. Okay. 
I'm going to lean into that. But I, and then also the weaknesses, like you said, um, finding out like what you're not so great at. And you're like, yeah. oh man. And it's, it's funny because what if it's something that you thought you were great at yes. <laughs> and there's eight people telling you, you suck at it. Then you're like, okay, maybe I need to stop doing this or get better at that. Yeah. So, so I'm, yeah. I should start like a challenge. I should start a challenge in like a podcasting community and find out how many people will actually do it. Maybe yeah. that will help me actually do it. Um, <laughs> it's What's crazy, challenging so. though, with asking a podcaster uh, for feedback on your appearances, you probably don't know that podcaster podcaster that well. So maybe they're not comfortable. And then also it's work for them to kind of rehash and revisit and think about like, how can I give, and not everyone is great at constructive criticism, right? right? They, they, they be true. terrible at it and, and they're not comfortable with it, but I like the idea to, to improve. I highly suggest going back to episodes you've guessed it on and listen to yourself as hard as it is and start evaluating what are your filler Ooh. words? What are the things that you weren't succinct, like stories that you told that could have been shorter and clearer? Um, did you ramble? You know, what were you really good at? You know, maybe that you lead with that. So there's ways that you can, it's like view, it's like being in sports and you're reviewing the tape and you're rewinding yeah. it and you're over and over and over. What did I do there? How did I do that layup? Like that is the same. If you take yourself seriously as a podcaster, then you should go back and review the tape. You know, I'm glad that you said that because this would be a great use of a speaking coach yeah. to say, these are the podcast appearances I've been on. Mm -hmm. What's your feedback? Yeah. And, and then you get this outside perspective from somebody yeah. who does this for a living. So that's a really good idea. Okay. So we're on the show. We're going through, we've decided to take a back seat. We're being an amazing guest. We're answering questions. We're energetic. We're engaging. And then we get to my favorite question of the show, which is, what's the best way for people to contact you? Yeah. And if you've <laughs> hired on-air brands, you're going to have this amazing place for people to go. Um, if you're like some of my guests who I love dearly, you're going to say, well, on LinkedIn, my URL is this. And on uh, Instagram, my URL is this. And they can go to my webpage here and you can click on these seven links. Uh, How do we make sure that we have an offer that we are set up to receive the um, awareness and the marketing returns on investment that we're going to get, um, whether that be an email catch in a value add or something to that effect? What do we as guests need to have to make sure that we are capturing on our time? So true. This is so good. This is such a good question. Um, if you have a podcast, there should be number one, there should be one call to action. Like, like Amber said, plastering that, you know, giving a response where you're like, here are the seven ways you can reach me is not the best call to action. One single call to action, whether it's your website or it's your email or even your phone number, or if you have a podcast, promote the podcast. You want to bring that tribe into your community. You want mm -hmm. to start growing your community in what better way than to share more ideas beyond that podcast appearance, you know, with them to visit you, your show every single week. Now that's, that's how, if you don't have a podcast though, and this, we ha also have to get better at, and we've done it from time to time, but not with consistency, Amber is, you have to have something that you're going to give them that's going to continue beyond that show. Yes. Now, whether that's a white paper, whether it's a free PDF or something where it's like, if you need more information, I, I spoke about this through the entire episode, Amber. Now I want to help you even beyond this. So go to my website, download this for free and yeah, continue I the think, conversation. Yeah. This is, I think the most important thing and the place that I dropped the ball for a long time until I got the right marketing team in place that helped me not drop the ball um, is people who are going to come find you on social media after a podcast episode. Something that you said in the podcast episode resonated enough with them for them to go to whatever link you gave them and follow you, which means you have their attention mm. and they are interested in the service or the result that you can provide to them, or at least in knowing you more. So I will, I used to give my community, go to facebook.com, you know, success center and join the community. And then I started realizing, like, why not have a white page that I can give out? 
what I talk about so much is success. So let's go to, you know, this URL and get this thing, this guide that's specifically put together to help you start to have the success you want. That was game changer, mm. game changer. So if you do have a podcast and you don't have a um, white page or, or a place for them to go where in exchange for something valuable, they give you a way to continue to communicate with them. Yeah. I, I will venture to say you're wasting your time. Right. And the thing is, so this happens as a result of taking action. I love people that take action. I love motivated people. A, a recent saying, Amber, that I want to share with you is, especially when it comes to our company um, with on-air brands and like how we help and serve um, our community, is that we don't motivate people because that it seems like people who want to start a show, they need a lot of motivation. And then the constant calls and emails like, what are you doing? What are you doing? I, I have somebody constantly on my quick dial where I'm like, how you doing? But that's not necessarily what we do. And it's not the most effective use of our time and your time. So we don't necessarily help motivate. We don't help to motivate people, but we help motivated people succeed. Right? Mm -hmm. If you're already motivated, great. And you started a show, fantastic. Fantastic. But then start to deconstruct. If you didn't do this already, what is the call to action? How are you beginning to nurture and foster that relationship beyond the every episode? And like Amber said, it's got to be through some white paper or something that you can offer for free to continue the conversation. And also, and this is marketing 101, able to capture an email from them when they go to get that free stuff from you. So that you can continue the conversation through emails, newsletters, whatever it is, just providing value. You're not necessarily selling, selling, selling to them, but you're giving them a ton of value that they can implement in their lives yes. or in their business. Yes. And this is why we work so well together, because I do help people figure out why they keep saying things that they want and then they don't go after them. And then they just pick something yeah. else they say they want and then they don't go after it. So yeah, frustrating why we work so well together. <laughs> um, this is been, this is been, I clearly don't teach people how to talk. Um, so <laughs> this has been an amazing topic that I think is so yes. important. So I'm glad that in the day that Todd decided that he didn't love us anymore, <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, that we were we able to have, um, a conversation and it's always great to mix it up. So it's always good to see you. Yeah, thank you so much for everything you do and for on air brands and any way we could always help and support. We love I love it. it. I love it. All right, guys. Um, if you listened to this and so you took something from it, comment. I'd love to know what it is that stood out to you and what some of the tips that you use when you are guesting on podcasts and how you use that to make sure that your business is moving forward and closer to the goals you want it to have. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to subscribe to wherever you're listening from and we'll catch you on the next show. What's our call to action? <laughs>